first thing we notice with the box is that instead of showing the display with the new wallpaper as usual, Apple are instead emphasizing the thinness of this MacBook. The new MacBook Air is available in four different colors. I really like the stealthy look of the Midnight, but decided to go with the Space Gray because it seems that the Midnight collects a lot of fingerprints and I do not like that. We also have the usual paperwork and stickers, which this time around match the MacBook's color. Each color variant comes with a matching MagSafe cable. For the power adapter, we have the option between a 35 watt dual USB-C port and a 67 watt single USB-C port. The dual port adapter is very convenient so you can simultaneously charge your iPhone if you have limited outlets. However, the 67 watt adapter does allow you to fast charge the MacBook Air battery up to 50% in only 30 minutes. So if you're someone who mostly uses the MacBook while on the go, the single port adapter is a must. Now onto the MacBook itself, it's got the new flat body design like the MacBook Pros with no engraving at the bottom and no writing indicating it's a MacBook. After first holding it, I must say that it feels great to hold. It definitely feels as thin as it looks. Opening the lid, we've got a 13.6 inch display with the notch and thin bezels giving it a clean look. For ports, we get the MagSafe and two Thunderbolt ports on the left side and a 3.5 high impedance headphone jack on the right side. The setup process is quick and easy as usual. The new Touch ID feels very good, it's actually the same as found on the M1 MacBook Pros. After setting up the MacBook and using for a few hours, I can give some first impressions. Starting with the typing experience, I can say that the keys feel very tactile and are comfortably spaced. We now also have full height function keys. The keys are also very quiet, so you will not have an issue working late at night. The keyboard might be one of the best aspects of this new MacBook Air, especially if you're coming from the butterfly keyboards. I must say that after typing on this for a while and resting my hands on the edges, I do not feel any discomfort as can be the case with other laptops that might have sharper edges. The trackpad is up to the Apple standard as usual and feels very fluid. The new speakers can be found between the keyboard and display, giving it a very clean look. They sound great for such a small laptop and will work for watching YouTube videos or listening to music. My favorite aspect of this MacBook so far has been how great it feels to hold. It definitely feels as light and comfortable as it looks. Now onto the display, the M2 MacBook Air features a 13.6 inch display with 2560 by 1664 resolution, P3 color gamut and 500 nits at maximum brightness. The M2 MacBook Air is 25% brighter than the M1 MacBook Air. This makes the M2 Air a great candidate for portability as the brighter screen will allow you to see the screen better in most conditions including outdoors. The bezels around the screen are extremely thin compared to the M1 model and the camera notch extends as far as the menu bar. I know some people may not appreciate the look of the notch but in reality the notch gives us more usable space. The camera is now 1080p as opposed to the 720p from the M1 model. As you may already know, the new MacBook Air uses the M2 chip, which brings the same 8-core CPU and an 8 or 10-core GPU. Just like the M1 MacBook Air, the M2 does not have a fan. This means that to cool itself or keep itself from getting too hot, the processor will have to slow down. So if you're running heavy programs such as Premiere Pro, you may not actually experience the full performance all the time if it starts getting too hot. But enough talk, let's run some tests. First we have the mandatory Geekbench benchmark. The CPU test gives a score of 1919 on the single core and 8913 on the multi core. Because I am a software engineer, I decided to run an iOS project on Xcode since I have always found in the past that running the Xcode simulator can be very slow. Comparing with my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, there was no noticeable difference while using Xcode itself to write code. However, when it came to building and running the project, the difference became clearer. To my surprise, the M2 MacBook Air was consistently building and running the project faster than the 16-inch MacBook Pro.
Something I noticed while transferring the project from my SSD to both laptops is that the M2 MacBook Air was a lot faster. I've seen some videos claiming the M2 write speeds to be slow, so I decided to test this myself. I ran some SSD read and write speed tests to get concrete numbers. As you can see from my test, I was consistently getting write speeds of around 2300 megabytes per second and read speeds of around 2800 megabytes per second. So should you get the M2 MacBook Air? If you're looking for a good performing and very portable laptop, it is a great choice, but might get a little expensive if you decide to go for some of the higher options. If you're thinking of upgrading your MacBook, let me know in the comments down below. I leave you with that and hope to see you again in the next video.